The Baltimore Ravens just signed safety Eddie Jackson. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing Ravens content every single day when we're in the NFL season. And training camp is just getting going. And the Baltimore Ravens have finally made their potentially final big move of the offseason. They had money going into the offseason. They used a little bit, right? They signed Derrick Henry. You know, they, they lose a couple of players. But the real question was, what are the Ravens going to do with the rest of their money? They had a couple million dollars. And myself, Joshua, and a lot of you in the comments were on the same page. And we said, hey, they should hold on to that money. Wait to see your guys in minicamp and everything like that. Wait for the offseason to get going. And then look elsewhere and see what veteran players, because there's always good bets on the free agent market, who is available and then go out and sign them on a cheap deal. Similar to how they did with Justin Houston, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, Jadavion Clowney last year, Kyle Van Noy. They love to do this sort of thing. The Ravens went out and got Eddie Jackson. So in the comment section, let me know. What are your thoughts on this signing? But let's jump right into it. So first off, I want to give credit to Adam Schefter. I believe he was the first person on the scene. He tweeted out a Ravens-type move, which I agree with. <laughs> Two-time Pro Bowl safety Eddie Jackson reached agreement today with Baltimore on a one-year deal per sources. A safety with six defensive touchdowns for the Bears now will bring his talents to Baltimore. Now, before I even give my personal thoughts, I wanted to talk to a Bears friend of mine. So I sent a text to my buddy Mike, who I've done videos with. I think I put out a post earlier this week. We played college football against each other. He put it on his channel. If you want to check it out, uh, so be it. So I texted him. He's from Chicago, watches all the Bears games. And I was like, hey, what are your thoughts on uh, Eddie Jackson? He actually didn't even know Eddie Jackson had been signed to the Ravens. So this was, these were his honest thoughts. These are these are quotes. He says, he's trash. <laughs> that was the first quote. And then he said, had two to three good years. One was elite, but isn't very good anymore. His big strength was his ball tracking and playmaking, and he lost a step athletically and can't cover as much anymore. He's also probably the worst tackler in the NFL. So those were his thoughts on Eddie Jackson. And I'm going to say, I don't necessarily disagree with him. I think when, when a guy like Adam Schefter puts out, you know, a tweet and saying like two time pro bowler, Eddie Jackson, you know, goes to the Baltimore, like former all pro. It's like, you should really only be saying that if they're coming off an all pro season or maybe two years ago, it was an all pro season. Eddie Jackson was a pro bowler in 2018 and 2019, and he was the all pro in 2018. So it's been, it's been some time. He's played four full seasons since he's had a pro bowl year. Um, two of those seasons, he went without an interception. Um, 2022 though, had a decent year, had four interceptions. Um, and last year he did have one interception. He's been listed as both free safety and strong safety. So really the thought process, I think of the Baltimore Ravens is they want a guy to go out there and replace Geno Stone because Geno Stone is a playmaking safety that allowed the Baltimore Ravens to be versatile in where they put Marcus Williams, where they put Kyle Hamilton. And I think Eddie Jackson brings that. He's played close to the line of scrimmage. He's played over top. And having a player that can do that, even if it's not necessarily to the ability of all pro player, I don't think we can expect him to be an all pro, all pro for the Ravens. The hope is, can he be just okay? Because if we're being realistic, if we're being honest, Geno Stone is a just okay safety. That's what we're trying to replace, right? And this isn't starting safety Geno Stone. This is... When Geno Stone and Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton are safeties, all are healthy. That's the Geno Stone we're replacing, right? Not, not when he was starting and he had like, I think five of, inter of his interceptions came when he was starting. No, we're looking at backup safety Geno Stone. I think that Eddie Jackson can really fill that void well because Geno Stone wasn't getting picks where he's baiting the quarterback and doing all these crazy things, right? Geno Stone wasn't Ed Reed. He wasn't Troy Polamalu. Right, He was an opportunistic player that made great on his chances. And Eddie Jackson is that type of player. If the ball is thrown near Eddie Jackson, he doesn't necessarily have 
the speed anymore to be able to go sideline to sideline and get those crazy interceptions. That's why we have Kyle Hamilton. That's why we have Marcus Williams. We're only trying to replace Geno Stone, who is very good situationally at getting big time plays. And I think Eddie Jackson can do that a little. Also, Mike said uh, he's maybe the worst tackler in the NFL. I would disagree because you know who the worst tackler in the NFL is? It's probably Geno Stone. (laughs) So like we're not necessarily losing anything uh, with Eddie Jackson tackling. Uh, in comparison to last year. So I think it's a really smart move for that aspect. Also, I think when we're looking at this, we can't just mark in, hey, Eddie Jackson is just going to be the number three safety. You know, we're not going to use any other guys. I think we have to look at our Darius Washington and what he can potentially bring as a slot player because I don't think we want Eddie Jackson playing at the line of scrimmage. I think we're going to want him over top and cover two or single high situations. So when we're doing that, if we want to have Kyle Hamilton over top and single high, maybe we bring in our Darius Washington to play the slot, right? And we can have, you know, him on one slot. If we're in nickel, we can also have uh, Brandon Stevens or Marlon Humphrey hop to the other side. And then Nate Wiggins, Brandon Stevens, you know, they can play the outside. The Ravens have so much versatility now with their defensive backs. And I think just having a smart you know, you know, he's not necessarily he's not the player he was, but the Baltimore Ravens, I think when you look at all the teams in the NFL are maybe the best when it comes to I don't want to use this phrase, but I'm going to I'm going to call it retirement home players, players that that people feel like are no longer worth starting and they're veterans. And all of a sudden the Ravens bring them in and they're able to have rejuvenating bounce back seasons. Why? Because maybe the situations they were in they were around a lot of bad players. The Chicago Bears defense has nobody. They have a good couple of good corners. I don't want to, you know, discount Tyreek Stevenson. Um, and I'm blanking on the other corner that they have, but he's also pretty good. Um, they're solid, but they don't really have a pass rush. They don't really have linebackers since they got rid of Roquan. And it's just like, okay, you're playing in a very difficult situation. You come to Baltimore and you got, oh, you're playing safety with. All pro Kyle Hamilton, Pro Bowl Marcus Williams, uh, Pro Bowl Marlon Humphrey, you know, Brandon Stevens, who is, you know, a potential all pro type player last season. He didn't make it, but he had a chance. All pro linebacker, uh, Roquan Smith, uh, Pro Bowler Justin Matabike. There's, it's stacked. It's absolutely stacked. And so he gets to fit in seamlessly where he's no longer the the big time playmaker. He's not the guy everyone's focused on. Instead, he gets to slide back and he gets to work with all these guys and maybe make a couple of big plays. And I think that can help him. I think that's why guys like uh, Justin Houston have been able to turn it around in Baltimore. It's because, hey, he was playing where he was the number one pass rusher, comes to Baltimore, and it's like, hey, we have a couple of other pass rushers. We have really good blitz packages. You're going to get a lot of one-on-ones. And when you do that, you're able to perform better. Jadavion Clowney, the exact same thing. Kyle Van Noy, another one where it's just like, oh, you bring him in. You know, Ronald Darby in the secondary last year, right? Ronald Darby was not a player that a lot of people were looking at as, um, hey, we need to just go out and have him. But instead, the Ravens bring him in, and they go out, and they he balls out. And then he gets a contract in Jacksonville. So when you have that type of thing, I think it's very valuable to be able to look at, hey, yes, they may not be the same player they were, but they're smart enough. They're good veterans to where they can fit in seamlessly into a defense. And I think that's what the Ravens really like to do. I think that's why Adam Schefter called it a Ravens type move. The other thing I want to point out is I looked at uh, Jeff Zrebic. Um, the legend, we all love Jeff. Uh, he tweeted out and said he can confirm uh, and then said a couple of things. And then said the Ravens have been in the market for a number three safety to essentially serve as Geno Stone's replacement and allow them to move Kyle Hamilton around. Just like I said, I think he, he fills that Geno Stone role, I think, very well. And again, we don't need him to be an all pro. We don't need him to be a pro bowler. We need him to go out there and maybe make a couple of plays, get a couple of interceptions, and really allow Zachary Orr and the rest of this Ravens defensive coaching staff and players to flourish and design as much unique play designs and have as many different scenarios and different looks that you can show the quarterback because the more looks the quarterback has to see is more things that he has to study for, which makes him less prepared uh, for the, you know, the big moments. 
right? Because sometimes maybe it's Josh Allen, maybe it's Joe Burrow, maybe it's maybe it's Deshaun Watson, Joe Flacco, whoever, whoever it is. They're sitting back there and they go, okay, Kyle Hamilton's in the huddle. Is he going to be single high? Is he going to be over the top? Is he going to be at the box? Is he blitzing off the edge? Oh, is Marlon playing the slot? Is he playing the outside? Is Nate Wiggins in the slot? Is Trenton Simpson covering the tight end or is it going to be Kyle Hamilton? You know, who's blitzing off the edge? Who's dropping into coverage? There's just so many things that you have to consider. And the Ravens do a great job of having versatility on their defense. This brings them the versatility. I think it's a really good signing. Again, this isn't a signing where you're going to be like, man, he just came in there and he won. You know, he was the best player on that team. That's not necessarily going to be the case. But if he can just play and if he can bring the Ravens just a little bit of versatility, I think it's a really good signing. And again, I don't think they necessarily had the money to go out and sign a Justin Simmons, to go out and sign a Stephon Gilmore. I think this is a really smart move where you can get him in for the start of training camp. And if you do that, you're going to be able to have a better postseason and potential Super Bowl run. Let me know in the comment section below your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you again next time.